Coming up next on Virginia Outdoor Life, we'll take you to the biggest expo on the face of the earth for hunters and outdoorsmen. Plus, learn how to reload your rifle and pistol shell. I can load a box. And illegal hunters beware, you're on candid camera. Don't touch that dial, Virginia Outdoor Life is next. Once again, and welcome to Virginia Outdoor Life for this Saturday, January the 20th. My name is Jim Hale, and alongside me once again is the Captain Eric Burnley. How you doing, Captain? I'm doing great. How you doing, Jim? I'm doing real good. I got to go home to, uh, to Texas last week, and uh, boy, did we have some time down there. Yeah, you had a, a lot to see, I know. Yeah, it was a business trip now. I want Absolutely. you to understand that. Absolutely. Very important. It, simply amazing. Uh, uh, my buddy Mike Bivo and I uh, took Virginia Outdoor Life down to Texas, where hunting and outdoor types from all over the world gathered for the SHOT Show. Well, I couldn't think of a better place to come for the world's biggest hunting show than right here in the Big D. Come on, we've got some shopping to do. Well, I've arrived in Hunter's Accessory Heaven here. We're at the Hunter's Specialty Booth, and I'm uh, here with Matt Moret from Cedar Rapids, Iowa, right? Yes, sir. Pleasure to meet you, Matt. And Matt, come, come here. i got to tell you something here. I, I got a little confession to make to you, and I don't want it to be real um, loud, but um, I didn't get a deer this year. Uh-oh. I did. Shh, shh, shh. It's, it's okay. <laughs> you know, you don't have to tell everybody, Matt. But um, as we can see, you, you know what you're talking about. There's the proof right there, right? That's blind squirrel finds an acorn once yeah. in a while. That's a little bit of luck, I think. Oh, come on now. We know. I know you people from Iowa know how to hunt deer. Oh, and that's why I've come all the way to Dallas for you to help me, Matt. Okay. And I would like some help, sir. Um, tell me, do these accessories and these uh, products really work? They really do. You know, today's hunter is getting more and more familiarized with, like, scent elimination systems, which is a big, important role in deer hunting. You know, turkey calls for turkey hunting. Um, hunting accessories are a big important part of today's hunter, today's hunter of the 90s. Well listen, I'm hoping that I have a little better success in the gobbler season coming up here. It's coming up, so let's, let's talk turkey on. here. I'll tell you, spring turkey season's coming and it's right around the corner. And one of the hottest new things that we have at Hunter Specialties is our Little Deuce Double Blast Call. <laughs> That's great! That'll make him gobble. Yes indeed. Alright. Oh! Wow! So, you see any deer up there yet today? No, can't see There's been a that. tremendous development of these tree stands over the days. They used to just be these crude, nasty, horrible things to sit in. Yep. But she's looking pretty comfortable up there. Well, that's what we've gone for with our 1996 product line. We go for safety and comfort in hunting situations. We feel that a hunter that is comfortable will hunt more safely due to less hunter fatigue and due to less problems with right. using their stand. We make these stands very user friendly. Well, more and more space every year at the SHOT Show is devoted to uh, archery, bow hunting, if you will. Uh, and we're here with Jeff Edwards of Hoyt Bows, one of the biggest companies in America. Did you ever believe this thing would get this huge? I tell you what, I really didn't. Um, it's it's uh, it's kind of just taken off. I don't think there's really anybody in the industry who's really expected uh, the archery industry to grow as fast as it has. What do you say to a person just getting into it? What is your advice for somebody who's starting out in the sport, because there's hundreds of them? I would find somebody who knows a little bit about the sport um, and, and attach yourself to their hip. I and mean, it's really a sport that, that requires having someone that you trust that can teach you the ethics and the basics so that you can get started. But it's a little from, overwhelming. It is. Yeah. I, I got to tell you though, it, it seems overwhelming when you're the, on the outside looking in, but when you really, when there's, there's some real fundamentals and once you've learned that, the beauty of, of bow hunting is that you can take those fundamentals and everybody seems to, to come up with their own method. It's a very, it's an individual sport, um, and that's probably one of the reasons why it's become so popular as well. Some of the products here are absolutely amazing. We're here with Chris Rogers of Hughes Products out of Thomasville, North Carolina, our next door neighbors down in Carolina. And uh, tell us what you got here, Chris. Basically what we have are our rattling sticks. It's a pretty unique item where you get a rattle, grunt and bleat, all three in one. You're able to rattle. 
and you have a grunt and a bleep. They're totally adjustable. Get the tones that you like. The deer in your area have different tones. This way you can kind of adjust That's to what great. you, you like. You don't have to mess with the horns and all that exactly. kind of stuff. Exactly. They're safe. You can throw them around your neck. They're easy to walk through the woods. You can roll them up. They fit well in a fanny pack. They're easy to carry, just like that. Or you can even just stuff them in your pocket. I am looking for the ultimate shotgun at the SHOT Show. Can you help me? I got the right gun for you. Do you really? Yes. I want to see it. Okay, you can come with me. All right, let's go. This is a four gun set, Woo! hunting set, which is uh, engraved, you know, all hand done. Okay, and uh, you got the 410. Can I hold one of those? You can hold one of these. Oh my you can gosh. pick it up. And what? This is one of the best guns you're going to be able to pick up in the world. I mean, it's like uh, going to a, the best car, it's a Ferrari in Italy. This is the, one of the best guns. This is a Ferrari yes, right here. Yes, other guns, yes. This is a Stradivarius. Yes, you got it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, t tell me, what makes this gun so it's, uh, extraordinary? The craftsman into the gun, you know, all the best, the best of the best. And you can have all four guns for $295,000? 295, yes. We're here with a gentleman from Remington that's telling me about his new waders. What do we have here? What we've got is a three mil neoprene with a Cordura coating on it. Right. It's going to give you the warmth of a nice neoprene. But when you're charging through that brush and through the sticks, you've got this coating on here that's going to, that's going to just bounce off of most anything you run into. We've got some padded shoulder straps, so you went out there throughout the day. Help me out here. Throughout the day as you're, you're lugging around through this stuff, Oh, these feel nice. You're going to be nice and comfortable with some quick release buckles on here. So it's freezing cold January in Virginia. We need the ultimate uh, coat here. Well, what you we found it. It's a Remington uh, 210 denier rain suit, 100% waterproof, comes with uh, bib overalls. Well, I guess uh, just missing one thing here. Now we got to find the right gun. Well, I think you definitely want an 870 pump gun. You know, waterfowlers have been using the 870 as a pump gun for for hunting for many, many years. Some folks call it a boat paddle because they claim right, that if yeah. your paddle falls yeah. out, you can use this thing. And that's because the pump action is so simple and reliable that in the wet and dirty conditions of waterfowling, it's the right. kind of gun you want. Now, this is what we call the 870 special purpose gun. Right. Special purpose because it's got a synthetic stock and a matte metal finish, very impervious to the bad weather and the dirty conditions of waterfowling. Perfect for any type right. of waterfowling. Screw in chokes here. Screw in chokes right. so you can make an adjustment right. to the type of shooting that you're doing and that'll get you through almost any conditions. And that nice, fast pump there. You'll be in great shape. See you later, Matt. Thanks. And get that big buck this year, bud. Okay. All right, dude. All right. Hey, it's look, it's Tom Miranda from ESPN. What's happening, man? Hey, dude, what's going on, Tom? <laughs> it's it's, it's You're Tom ready Miranda. to go. You're ready to go, aren't you? I'm ready. Yeah, you're on that TV show. What's it called? Outdoor ES Adventure Magazine yeah, on ESPN. On ESPN. We do hunting, fishing, and adventure around the world. That's right. Well, Tom, um, I'm going to get that big buck this year and get me a gobbler, too, in the spring, as a matter of fact. Well, it looks like you're almost ready for it. I'm almost ready, Tom. You yeah. got any parting <laughs> advice for me? Well, I want to wish you all the best luck on your show. OK, thank you, Tom. And I love Virginia. All right, well, we want, we want you to come to Virginia. I come to Virginia all the time. Virginia's a big sponsor of my show. It's a great time in Virginia. All right. Virginia's for lovers, right? You better believe if it, If you like Tom. hunting or fishing yeah, and or for adventure. hunters like me, Tom, I'm, I'm going to get them this year, bud. <laughs> Go for all it. All right. Well, thank you, Tom. Thank you anything for thanking me. Anything else you can tell me, some, some, some parting advice on, on hunting or anything? Well, remember, hunters and fishermen are conservationists, so protect your environment. You heard it from Tom. <laughs> there you I'll go. see you all later. I'm all shot showed out here. Well, I guess I got a little carried away there. You know what <laughs> hey, I mean? You know, turn you loose with a credit card, you go nuts. <laughs> you go down there, man. I'll tell you what, you're ready to get out in the woods and go hunting after I you imagine. see all, all that cool stuff, especially <clears throat> at the Parazzi. You yeah. know what oh. I mean? Woo! Is that a sweet gun beautiful, or what? Beautiful. Hey, we've got, we went down there, we bought a whole duffel bag full of uh, hot products back, and we're going to demonstrate uh, hot product number one for you tonight. We got some great stuff down there, so we hope you check back in with us every week. But uh, getting back to this week, We've got an interesting story coming up. We'll show you how to reload your rifle shells. It's a great way to save money, and it's coming up right after this. And hello once again. You know, until spring comes around, there's not nearly as much to get out and do, especially with all this horrible weather we've been having. So we've been trying to come up with some stories that'll help you pass the time along constructively until we can all go back out. Now, along those lines, 
Eric, you hooked up with a guy who uh, really knows how to do just that. I sure did, Jim. Uh, Steve Stevens is an avid target shooter. In his spare time, he reloads his rifle and pistol shells at his house in Chesapeake. It's easy to do and a great money saver. Just watch this. First step, of course, is you wash them in soap and water. I like to use dishwasher detergent because it doesn't foam so bad. And then you have to trim them to length. And then you have to deburr it inside and out. You can see the difference between yeah. that mm -hmm. and that. Sure, sure. Now then you're ready to load them. Pistol reloading takes three dies instead of two. Uh, this one right here is your sizer die. It's got a carbide ring in it and pistol ammunition does not have to be lubricated when you're using a carbide die. And most everybody buys carbide dies now. So, we get the die screwed down and we get a case and you size it, that pops the primer, one sized. I'm going to show you a little primer tool that works quite well. And you press up on this and that seats your primer. Again, the primer should be flushed to slightly below the case. Here we're doing the belling operation on the cases. Before you can uh, insert the bullet, they have to be belled so that the soft lead will not be uh, shaved off by the sharp edge of the case. And it puts a little flare or a bell, we call it, on the edge of the case so that the bullet can start into it and not shave any lead. This die, I've already preset the powder charge on it and it's ready to go. And it works by the pistol case actually pushing the actuating lever and causing the powder disc to cycle back and forth and drops the powder in. The next step, we'll take out the flare that was put on the uh, case. Take and put the case in there, pick up a bullet, set the bullet in place. It needs to be fairly straight, but you can stand a little inaccuracy. Run it up and you seat the bullet and the very last part of it will take the flare back out. You can see a bright ring there where it's actually squeezed it back. We now have a batch of bullets ready to shoot. You know, our buddy Joe Perkins yes. is, has been a reloader for a long time. I think he does shells. Yeah, you, shells you'd be right? surprised how many people do that. Oh yeah, I know. There's a lot of folks that do it. And I think more folks would get into the sport if they knew how easy it was to, to make their own shells and, and it's cuts the cost of, the, of it down considerably. You got to be careful doing it though. Very careful. You're working with, uh, with powder, gunpowder. It, it won't explode unless it's in a shell, but it can burn. And you've got to make sure that all of your specifications are absolutely correct. Right. You need to get the right books, which you can get at your gun shops, and make sure that everything you do is perfect because a little mistake can make a big, big difference. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> And hello once again, it's scrapbook time. So let's open up that old outdoor scrapbook and take a look. We got some great pictures you folks have been sending in to us. Starting off right off the bat, there's my pal, Al Bulls with the Manry Hunt Club. Al is from Sedley, Virginia. And he bagged that 8.170 pounder on Thanksgiving Day. Eric, how about he that? He must have been thankful for that, I imagine. Yeah, he's got a big old smile. I understand he was just sleeping, snoring in his stand. The, the buck came up and snorted he thought the him. buck was going to to charge him, so he had to shoot him. Yeah, yeah. self-defense. You know, right, exactly. Well, self -defense yeah. Way to go, Al. Good, good job nice there. Nice job there, buddy. Okay, this is Mr. John Kleinnecht of Norfolk with a 27-pound, uh, 42-inch striped bass. Not bad, Eric. Nice fish, nice fish. Uh, there was a lot of them out there. Close to that size, but the 42 inches, that's a, it's just two inches off of a citation. That's a, that's a nice fish, yeah, beautiful you fish. You see him gasping for air there. He's about to pass out because <laughs> yeah. he's holding that fish Took up him so long. To get, he got it at the high rise <laughs> right. on the Lady Jane. And how about this? You know, this is the second woman in a row we've had this week with a beautiful buck. Look at that, would you? Yep. This is Amy Ricks of Capron with an eight-pointer taken December 1st in Southampton County. The spread measured 16 inches wide and 17 inches tall, and her smile's about a foot across there, as you can see. a beautiful see. animal, nice animal. Yeah, way to go, Amy. Yep. This is Jim Harris of Virginia Beach with an eight and a half pound. Looks like he's got himself a nice tog there, Captain. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. They're not easy to catch either. You got to have a, a deft touch to catch one of them. They, you have to hit them just before they bite. 
So uh, that's a that's a nice fish. Yes, it is. And here's Steve Jenkins. Now you may remember Steve. He's right. our pigeon racer. That's right. Man, that's right. The Norfolk police officer who's into pigeon racing, and when he's not racing pigeons, he is a. Uh, uh, you know, catching bass. He caught this one uh, not in Chesapeake. He caught it in Suffolk, a uh, Lake six, Prince, one yeah. of the uh, one of the uh, Suffolk lakes. It's time right. now to check on the outdoor news. Now, last week we uh, showed you a new device that game wardens are using to uh, crack down on illegal hunters. It's a mechanical de deer decoy. Looks very realistic. Well, uh, game warden Lanny Chitwood sent us a tape of people who were duped by the decoy. <laughs> Check some of this stuff out. They run surveillance video of the encounters people have with the decoys. Check out this guy. He thinks he's going to get him a deer. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Not all these people took a shot at the fake deer. And he's just kind of wondering, now, well, I don't uh, know about don't look that. look too good to me. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of people actually do, though, break the law. They use the decoy in Southampton, Sussex, Greensville, Surrey, and Isle of Wight County. All in all, 52 shots were fired at the deer last year. Lanny and his co-workers kept busy with 131 misdemeanor charges, seven felonies, 41 firearm seized. They took three bows. And sometimes, folks, if you sued out of your truck, they're going to take your truck, too. That's right. And they've got four of them. So let that be a lesson. That's why That's Lanny right. wanted us to use the video. That's right. That's right. People should realize how serious a crime it is. And, and as we talked about Ever since we've been doing the show, right. they're stealing from you and me, the licensed and, and hunters that are paying the, the, the dollars to keep the game management going, and they're, they're, they're stealing right. from us. If, you, if you're not supposed to be hunting there, you are a poacher. Yep. And you might be going to jail. You're not a <laughs> As promised, we have got an excellent hot product this week we picked up from the SHOT Show. The name of this company is Butler's Pantry out of Cedar Grove, Wisconsin. And when I saw this, Eric, I knew we were talking hot yep, product absolutely. here. Take a look at that. All that good spices and breading for it, your fish. They call it wildlife seasonings, and it's just everything you can imagine for your venison. We know a lot of you folks have a bunch of venison stacked up in your freezers Some right now. Some of us do. Yeah, that, oh, well, hey, don't, <laughs> don't take any cheap shots, buddy. I got, they gave me a lot of venison, even if I didn't kill one. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? And there's the address of the folks up there in Wisconsin. 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 We are going to draw a winner for this. Outstanding. I mean, we got it for fish, venison, everything you could want. We got some Cajun seasoning. Woo! This, this is one of the best we've ever had right here. Yes, I it got, is. Good, I got to tell one. you. And we're going to get the old crab pot here and draw Take ourselves a lucky up. winner. All right. I'll go ahead and let you well, do it, Captain. You want me to do it? All right. Yeah. I'm easy. I'll go for this okay. one. Okay. People fishing. Okay. Uh, looks like Carl uh, Lohoffer, L-O-H. It is Carl Lohoffer from okay. Virginia Beach, and we're going to send these your way. And, They're coming and, to you, buddy. Yeah. You know, a lot of people have a tough time cooking up their venison and stuff, so this is going to make it a yeah, little bit yeah, easier yeah. for you. Right there. Okay, that, that is going to Carl. All right, Eric, and... Uh, Hey, man, I heard you had a fun little fishing trip this we, week. Uh, we had a little fun, yeah. We'll you'll show you all about it next week, but the bluefin tuna are definitely in at, uh, at Hatteras. This was off of Cape Hatteras out of, uh, out of Hatteras uh, Harbor Marina on a boat called the uh, Woo! Tuna Duck. And uh, this was uh, the, one we, the one fish that we kept. It was about 250 oh. pounds. All the rest of them were bigger. Just a little bit and of we're fun We're saving there, the big ones later yes, for you, sir. buddy. Yes, oh, sir. That looked like a good we're time. We're saving the big ones for you. They'll be right. down a little bit later on. And I said, mark one with Jim's name on it because we're going to bring him back and let him pull on one of those. You got it. Well, time for us <laughs> to uh, get out there in the outdoors. So that's where we will see you until next week. Take them easy.